Who is that? It's Max, isn't it? That's not Max. Max isn't as hot as that. He's acting like Max, like he owns the place. Let's go see who it is. Hi. Who are you? I'm Andrew Ignory. Drew to my friends, which includes all of you, I'm sure. I'm Max's cousin. Max decided at the very last minute to start a term earlier at the French Writing College, so here I am. I'll be looking after things till Max gets back. Do you ride horses? I learned to ride right here, years ago. I'm not brilliant, but I get by. So who will be taking the lessons? As you know, Red has just completed his instructor training, so he'll be managing that department. So things will just carry on as normal? Unless I can see something that could be improved. I've just finished a degree in business management, so I'll change what needs to be changed from a business point of view. In fact, that's one of the reasons why Max asked me here. You sounded better educated than Max. What are you gonna say about me when I leave, Veronica? Hey, you guys, wait up! Peppa, come on! I'm not even trying! Are you deaf? Hey, Christy, that's not very nice. We'll ask Drew to buy us some new school horses. How would you like that done to you? How would you like to ride the slowest, <laughs> laziest school horse there is? Pepper's useless. He's not lazy. Are you, Pepper? Maybe he's sick. We may as well go back anyway. This trail is blocked by the tree. <laughs> Plenty of fire would not. Max should have a look at Pepper. He's not himself. Not Max, Drew. Oh, yeah. Maybe he's got just a touch of colic. No, he's not sick. He's just old. His working days are over. My thoughts exactly. That can't be right. I learned to ride on Pepper. Me too. And me. I'd say that's the problem. He's 28. So, what will happen to him, Drew? Well, he'll be put out to pasture for a while until... Until what? Until he has to be put down. It doesn't seem right. Sort of dumping him, because he's old. After all he's done for us. And it didn't help having Christy trying to run around like a yearling. I wasn't! That's not fair, Stevie. It was going to happen anyway. Yeah, well, Christy made sure it happened sooner rather than later. Come on, everybody. It's nobody's fault. It's just the way things are. We have to do something. I bet you it'd be different if Max was still here. That's not true. Pepper's a working horse who can't work anymore. That's what happens. Knock, knock. Anyone home? My name's Bud. G'day. Deborah told me I should come down and introduce myself. Bud's gonna stay a few days. If you have any questions about anything to do with horses, fire away. Yeah, well, I've been a jockey, I've been a blacksmith, a cartwright, jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> ah. Why the long faces? One of our school horses has been struggling a bit lately. And, well, Pepper's come to the end of the road. 
pepper. Appaloosa gelding, about 15 hands. That's him. How do you know Pepper? Well, I started working here at Pine Hollows over 50 years ago as a, as a kid. And on and off since then. Well, I taught Max and Drew how to ride. I met uh, Pepper's poor old mum, Licorice, well, over 30 years ago. She had a tough time foaling. I spent most of the night with her. Oh, I must say hello. We've got a lot of catching up to do, old fellow, haven't we? Hey. Looks like you and me are in the same boat. Two old timers. This time's running me out. Take turns riding Pepper, we promised to nurse him along. And that way Pepper will last for years. It'll work, Drew, we promise. You're not gonna make this easy for me, are you? We've thought the whole thing through, Drew. Pine Hollow is a business, and there's a lot of expenses at the moment. The last thing we need are vet bills for an ailing horse. The insurance is due, so is the feed bill. And we need to buy in more wood for next winter. I know we can get free firewood. Where? Last week, Storm brought a big tree down in Fox Valley. It has last two winters. Yeah, but listen, girls. Labor is money. If we're gathering wood, we're not doing something else. We'll gather it. <laughs> and how will you get it back here? There's no way this wagon is going anywhere. Yeah, it's ancient. Ah, what a beautiful wagon. Yeah, except that it's half rotten. Oh, yeah, but the chassis is fine. Yes, I'll have this looking as good as new and a couple of shakes of the lamb's tail. Really? Well, I told you, I used to be a cartwright. That's until they um, fired me. Ah, but that's another story. <laughs> It was just so mean of Stevie to say it was my fault. Oh, a new low, even for the saddle club. In fact, this whole place is going downhill lately. Max taking off without warning. School horses getting old. And strange old men wandering around. We should just get our parents to sign us up somewhere else. Oh, I've thought about that, but everywhere else is probably just as bad. I mean, for the advanced riders. <laughs> like us. <laughs> Particularly if you've been cursed with being sensitive. It's a curse, all right. Red. Can you come help us do up the old wagon in the barn? Who's us? Bud, Phil, Carol, Lisa, and me. Sure. What about you two? What about us? We're going to chop firewood when we finish the wagon. Come and help. <laughs> You've got to be joking. We're here to perfect our riding skills, not our wood chopping skills. Pine Hollow is definitely going downhill. Well done, everyone. Yeah, I'd be happy to hire you as apprentices any day of the week. Look, just like new. That's if you can read the grain. Read the grain? See, where the grain's not so close together, that's its weakest point, right? Should split like a charm. Easy when you know how. <laughs> it's stuff you can't learn from a book. It's stuff that has to be passed down from one generation to the next. Like if you're splitting wood, you've got to read the grain. Read the grain? What? <laughs> it's just my bad luck. I can't be there tomorrow. Nice one, Phil. We've lost a stable hand at Cross County, so the rest of us have to pitch in. 
Have you guys looked in the mirror lately? Somebody needs a shower. No deodorant will stand up to four hours of wood chopping. <laughs> I'm happy to take <laughs> your word for it. What about splinters? What about them? And we're doing it again tomorrow. Ah, uh, you kids just are so not grown up. Let's get out of here. It could be catching. <laughs> The Saddle Club have finally flipped. Mm. Open your eyes. Did some kind elves come and do this while I was sleeping? <laughs> there were six good elves. Lisa, Stevie, Carol, Phil, Red, and their leader, Bud. You guys are the best. Thank you. <laughs> Drew. Now that we've saved you all that money, does that mean Pepper's going to be okay? Look, it's, it's not just about the money. You girls have feelings for Pepper. But you've got to learn that mightn't always lead you to do what's best for him. He's had a good life, but it's over now. Please, Drew. Sorry, girls, I don't want to talk about this anymore. <sighs> He's moping because he can't be with the other horses. You feel sidelined, don't you, Pepper? I'd feel so bad if I wasn't allowed to be with my friends. Yeah, like if you guys were out having fun and I was cooped up inside by myself. Maybe one of us should stay with him and keep him company. Yeah, take turns. He looks brighter already. I'll take first go. You girls are special. You're good with our wagons and good with our horses. I feel so sorry for him. Poor Pepper. All in his lonesome. You got a real fellow feeling for animals. Animals can teach us so much. <laughs> he knows I've come to say goodbye, haven't you? Say goodbye? Are you leaving? Yeah, I'm heading back to the city on Thursday. <clears throat> you like it more than here? Of course not. But Drew and Deborah. Not having an easy time at the moment. I don't want to overstay my welcome, and I like to pay my way. We're really going to miss you, bud. I miss you, folks. In this fine place. I'd like to stay, but it's not to be. I'm sure the Regnaries would love to have you stay longer. Well, even if they would, I'd, I'd have to find a job. I, I feel really useless without a job. Yeah. Yeah, I must be getting a bit of a cold. See you later, girls. Red put the other horses out so Pepper's got company now. He's happy again. We've got to find a way to make Bud stay. And save Pepper. You really are little misfixits, aren't you? Well, somebody has to do something. It's just the way things are. What a pathetic thing to say. Knock off the wood chopping, Stevie. It's making you weird. Well, if weird means caring, then give me weird every time. Veronica, let me ask you something. Bud wants to stay at Pine Hollow, but because of lack of money, he has to go back to the city. Fair. And after a lifetime of being a good, faithful horse, Pepper has just given the brush off. Fair. I didn't say it was fair, it's just reality. Well, I don't like that sort of reality. <laughs> you can't do anything about it. You can always do something about it. <laughs> yeah, like what? Minus Creek. Of course. Brilliant. You guys are spending way too much time together. You are way weird. The old cottage of Minus Creek. Bud could live there. But it's too old and dilapidated. That's what they said about the wagon. Who owns it? The rich guy with the Angora stud. Mr. Lomax. Let's call him and see what the rent is. Like a hack. 
And you look like an amateur. Here, I'll show you how it's done. I'm pulling his head high. And he's looking good. And I am looking pretty good myself. You don't know everything, Veronica. I never said I did. But I know what matters. And keeping a horse's head nice and high matters. Not always. Particularly if you're jumping him. A horse judges distance better if it sets its head one way and then another. I won the Grand National this way. But that's another story. Well, yes. Thank you so very much. I spent two weeks in France at Monsieur Louverture's school. Funny he didn't mention it. Oh, maybe he didn't know. And maybe it's not true. No, oh, try it. You'll see what I mean. As if. Mr. Lomax isn't using the cottage, and nobody else is. So why won't he let us have it cheap? Why are rich people so mean? That's how they get rich, because they keep everything for themselves. If we could scrape together a month's rent. But Bud doesn't have a job, remember? One thing at a time. Hey, we could chop more wood and sell it for rent money. Yeah, Tim's timber yard buys wood. Let's go. Rich people are not mean. No, we're just careful. The old guy's right, isn't he? Yeah. Garnet's more confident if I don't pull his head up. Same with Bark. How come your hero Louverture didn't mention it? I guess because Bud was riding horses when Monsieur was still in short pants. We owe Bud an apology. <coughs> I've got a better idea. Hello, Mr. Lomax. It's Veronica D'Angelo here. Look, I'm really interested in renting that dilapidated little cottage of yours at Miner's Creek. And I'd like to mention also that my father, as president of the golf club, is looking at your membership application right now. Yes. And I'd like to say also that the cottage and your membership are, shall we say, not unrelated? <laughs> oh, <laughs> too kind, Mr Lomax. Our families do go back a long way, you're right. My father will call you tonight. Goodbye, Mr Lomax. Have you been there all that time? Quiet as a mouse. You sneaky! I heard every word, Veronica. I wouldn't be calling me sneaky if I were you. You are so sly. You seem to have that in common. We have nothing in common. Are you sure now? You don't know me. <laughs> and you don't know me. Perfect. I can see straight through you, Veronica. <laughs> X-ray vision eyes. You play too many computer games. I thought what you did just then for Bud was real nice. <laughs> well, I did it to show how pathetic the Saddle Club are. That's what you tell yourself. But I know different. <laughs> Stick to computer games, Scooter. I'm way out of your league. Maybe. Maybe not. 20 bucks for all that wood. What a ripper. And we had to unload it ourselves. It hardly paid for your oats, hasn't it, Napoleon? So, D 
didn't work out, eh? We got 20 bucks for the whole wagon load. A daylight robbery. Gee. And you three are pretty smart, aren't you? What I'm saying is that if you couldn't achieve something with your combined talent, then gosh, what would you think of someone who could do it all by themselves? What are you getting at, Veronica? You three have been running all over the countryside, chopping down whole forests, but you couldn't get the cottage, right? Your point being? How good is someone who scored the cottage rent-free with one phone call? Did you? How? The golf club did the trick. You hit Mr. Lomax with the golf club. <laughs> sort of. Way to go. Good one, Veronica. Hi. How nice of you to arrive after all the hard work. Hey, I told you. I've been doing chores across county until we get a replacement stable hand. You need a stable hand across county? I told you we did. What about Bud? Bud. <gasps> They're back. Did you get the job, Bud? No. I didn't have the right qualifications to be a stable hand. What? Who says? Is it true, Drew? But I got an even better job. How come? Cross County is starting up a new tourist heritage venue for the blacksmith shop, etc. And they want me to be a consultant. Me, a consultant. <laughs> so I finally made it. That's fantastic, bud. Drew, uh, could you do me a favor? Sure, bud. Well, I figured I might get a bit lonely up at that cottage up at Miners Creek. Uh, would you consider giving me old Pepper for company? <laughs> Why, sure, bud. You're very welcome to him. If that's all right with you girls. Of course. Excellent. Pepper would love it. <laughs> <laughs> We always told you you had a lot of future in front of you, didn't we, Pepper? You may be 28, but you're still a fine specimen. In fact, you look as strong as a horse. <laughs> <laughs> you and Bud are gonna live happily ever after, aren't you? But that's another story. <laughs> Ever after, aren't you? But that's another story. <laughs> Hello, world. This is me. Life should be. up on a cold morning and going riding. And that's not getting up on a cold morning. And not going riding. <laughs> What's that? Who are they, I wonder? Let's go and say hello.
Easy, boy. Hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy, boy. You did well to stay on. Hi. I'm Raphael. Hi. I'm Lisa. And this is Stevie and Carol. Hi. Hi. Oh, thank you for what you did just now. Uh, Diablo needed a good gallop. And he likes to make new friends. <laughs> He's sure good at it. Actually, I, I wonder if you guys can do me a favor. Sure. Just ask. ask. <laughs> I'm looking for work. What do you do? Well, um, I'm good with horses. Are there any stables around here? been through this way once before. Are they carnival folk? Yeah, they follow the county fairs and rodeos. Steer way clear of people like that. People like what? They're all crooks. That's what my father says. You were lucky to get away without losing anything. There's a lot of rubbish talked about fairground people. It's just stupid rumours. I can't believe anybody with a smile like Raphael's could be a crook. What? Most of them are just thieves. They grab anything that's not nailed down. Exactly. Guys, you really know how to take the shine off things. Word of advice, have nothing to do with them. That's going to be hard, because here he comes now. Watch your wallets, everyone. Hi again. Uh, which way to the uh, office? It's up the stairs, Raphael. Come on, I'll show you. Wish me luck. What a gorgeous. Of course. Hey, haven't you got her out of stealing a saddle yet? I can mend most things. Leather tack is my specialty and I can do a bit of shoeing. And what's your hourly rate, Raphael? I'll tell you what, Drew. I'll work the first day for nothing and then you can tell me how much you think I'm worth. And what if I don't like your work? Hasn't happened yet. Deal. Where are you camped, Raphael? Uh, there's a, a cattle track, two bellies over, at the end of that. Oh, that's Carolyn's land. You did ask his permission. Uh, not yet. It's just that he's not very friendly. In fact, he's downright unfriendly. Yeah, I always thought he was a bit crazy when I was a kid. Well, then it looks like I won't be asking then. <sighs> what are you doing? Leave it alone, Neville. Neville, don't touch that's it. That's too hot. Put it back down, Neville. Well, who's going to go first? I wanted to do some more at the old height. We're just training, Whoa. Neville. Don't be weak. Nobody's being weak. We all want it lower. You better give me some competition at this jump off, just to make it interesting. You're so full of yourself, Neville Cowlin. If the saddle club are too scared to do it, please stand aside. I wish Neville had stayed at his old pony club. Everybody takes a while to fit in when they're new. Will he ever fit in? I'm not holding my breath. You've done this before? Yeah, a few times. Any more of those to keep you busy? Hey, Raphael. Oh, hi, everyone. <laughs> Got your heart at it. Yeah, it's good to be busy. Give it a rest. Thought carnival people didn't like work. Never try pitching 20 tents in one night with all weathers? So how come you're afraid of holding down a regular job? Cut it out, Neville. Don't take Neville too seriously. I work pretty regular. Last six months as a wrangler and play guitar or dances for pocket money. Acoustic or electric? Both. And bass too. You're all talk. 
But you can't even play. And I've earned some money rodeo riding. Wow. Is there anything you're not good at? Putting up with fools. <laughs> We've just had an idea. Good. There's so many things happening at Pine Hollow, it's hard to keep track. So we're thinking of starting a little new sheet. Well, that's a wonderful idea. Well, I thought of it. We thought of it together, Melanie. There's no I in team. <laughs> well, what are you going to call it? That's what we were going to ask you about, you being a journalist. Deborah, did Max ever have trouble following the accountant's book work or...? The accountant? He was always on the golf course. Better ring the bank manager. Get it straight from the horse's mouth. That's a great title. Thanks, Drew. Very clever. Sorry? Straight from the horse's mouth. Brilliant. Let's go, Melanie. Is this something I said, or...? It's straight from the horse's mouth. Very clever. Why does everybody keep saying hello? Yes. Um, what I wanted to find out was the... Why do you think it's us? You happen to be on my land the day my prize mare goes missing, that's why. Please, stop shouting. Don't tell me what to do, Sonny, I want answers. Look, we've never even seen your horse. Hey, you're way out of line, you hear me? Mr. Cowlin, Raphael has been with us all day. What are you saying he's done? I want you off my land or I get the law to run you out of the county. People like you don't belong around here. Lots of information. The upcoming jumper for Pine Hollow. Next month's regional champs. What do you think, Melanie? I like that article and that article. The two you wrote. And they're great. Except for all the semicolons. What's a semicolon? It's a comma with a dot above it. Ah, uh, that. Well, whenever I don't know whether to finish off the sentence or not, I just add in one of them. What do you think, Deborah? I glanced at it before. It's good as a bulletin, but maybe it needs something more than just information. Maybe it needs something about what's going on here socially. Like a gossip column? I was thinking more human interest. Gossip is what people are really interested in. Like what other people are trying to keep secret. Yeah. Well, have you got enough to put in it? Sure. Romance, secret rivalries, feuds. Romance? Really? You'd be surprised. Surprise me. Well, I heard that Megan James was going out with this guy, Reese Malloy. No, from no. Oscar. She so has the hots for that guy, Tim Morris, from Quiet. Put that in as well. Shouldn't you just check before you put this into print? I know. We'll write Megan James as Megan J and Reese Malloy as Reese M. Oh, and Tim Morris as Tim M. Mm -hmm. No one will ever guess. So we can camp at Pine Hollow. Drew is an all round nice guy. Drew and Deborah are expecting you. Do you want to head on over? Sure. Where's Diablo? Ah, I turned him out to roam free. But aren't you afraid he's going to get lost? He knows this country between here and Sweetwater. It's here I found him running free. Running free? Yeah, that's the way he likes it. <laughs> but how do you find him again? I always know where he is. How? I listen to him. You better go and get him now, my son before the law arrives. I'd love to own a horse like Diablo. Nobody owns Diablo. A horse with spirit owns himself.
wonder what they're up to. Let's find out, shall we? Well, well, Diablo, with another horse. Isn't that Lady Louise? <clears throat> Looks like her. Did you know she was here, Raphael? Of course not. Oh, no. Here comes trouble. I knew you were a horse thief. Busted. <laughs> I didn't bring Lady Louise here. You've just been caught red-handed. Mr. Callan, you know Lady Louise has run up before. She was probably lonely and followed Diablo. Come to think of it, what are you three doing here? Exactly. Why would Raphael lead us to where he's hidden the stolen horse? Unless you're in on it as well. Now listen to me, the four of you. I'm going to make trouble for this horse thief and his little helpers. <sighs> you should be ashamed of yourself. You're harboring horse thieves on your property. Whoa, whoa there, no. Now, I've heard what happened, and I don't see how it amounts to thieving. Lady Louise jumped a fence and palled up with another horse. It's just not that serious. Oh, really? Well, I'll tell you what is serious. Three of your girls were his accomplices. Oh, come on. Come on what? That is serious. Look, Drew, these people are vagabonds and you've been conned by them. Thanks for your concern, Bob. But I can handle myself. This would never have happened if Max were here. What's it called? Um, oh, it hasn't got a name yet. Are you making it up now? Yeah. Where did you learn to play so well? My dad was good. He taught me for a couple of years. But he's not around anymore? No, he didn't like travelling all over. He wanted to settle down, so he ran away from the circus. <laughs> Have you ever thought of settling down? Uh, yeah, but you get used to the way things are. And Mum, she likes the life, so uh, she's too old to change. Aren't you worried about your education? Uh, I get by on my correspondence lessons. It's a tough world out there. That's why I'm working hard at school. Yeah, but you don't need to be a genius to mend tack. <laughs> you could do much bigger things than that, Raphael. If you gave yourself a chance. Do you think that? I haven't known you for long, but I can tell you're special. Sorry, didn't realize I was interrupting anything. I thought the saddle club were meant to look out for each other. What's on your mind, Veronica? Nothing. Oh, we all know there is. I just don't like seeing Lisa make a fool of herself with an older man. And this would be Raphael. Poor Lisa is so naive and inexperienced. It's very nice of you to be so concerned all of a sudden. I'm just afraid she won't be able to handle it and wind up getting very hurt. I really think you should have a word with her. And you think someone more sophisticated could handle Raphael? Of course. Someone like you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you are so not mature. <sighs> Hi, Diablo. Do you want to come for a ride with Lady Louise? I thought you and Lady Louise were friends. Come on, Diablo. Thank you. 
going to be focus. Hello. <laughs> nice day, isn't it? It's wonderful to be alive. <laughs> uh, do you tell fortunes only at fairs or any time? Why don't you come inside and we'll see what's in the crystal for you? <laughs> it concerns an affair of the heart, doesn't it? Uh, no. <laughs> You forget, I can see things. <laughs> oh, well, uh, maybe. <laughs> Raphael. Hi there. You're a very good rider. I was wondering, do you give private lessons? Riding lessons? Yeah, I'd pay you, of course. Nobody's asked me that before. I just feel I've learned all I can at Pine Hollow. Yeah, sure, but I can't do it straight away. That's OK. Hi there. Hi. Your mother is a very good fortune teller. Really? I mean, yeah, I know. She looked into my future and she got almost everything right. Oh, the future is like an open book to her. It concerns you too. Me? She said we would become romantically linked. Mum said that? Well, she said a tall, dark stranger would come into my life now. But maybe there's another tall, dark stranger. <laughs> like who? Like Neville. <laughs> Um, he's not a stranger, he's just strange. I don't know, Veronica, I just get the feeling that we're just too different. But you could change. Into what? From a stranger to a friend. It's the same as show jumping. Why do we have different age groups? Because competitors are of different levels of experience and maturity. Same with boyfriends. Lisa's a nice kid, but she's just too young for somebody like Raphael. And you're not. Raphael and I have had a little talk. On the surface of it, you wouldn't think we'd get on. But we've discussed things and reached an understanding. <laughs> I think you're being a bit hasty, Veronica. Meaning what? Well, I've had a long talk to Raphael, and I'd say I've reached an understanding. What about? He's very impressed with my writing and has offered to give me private lessons. Oh, I see. Just writing lessons. I'm talking about something more personal. Like what? I'm sorry, it's personal. Tell me! Christy, calm down. I'm sorry you had your heart set on Raphael, but it's just not meant to be. We'll see about that. Okay, Raphael? Diablo's gone missing. How? I don't know. I can usually find him anywhere, like I told you, but I'm afraid he must be hurt, or... Or what? Or maybe he was taken away by somebody. And... I wondered why he was looking so pleased with himself. Who? Where's Diablo? Who? Diablo, Raphael's horse. Where is he? Suppose he just drifted off, like you drift a boyfriend. If you hurt him, yeah, you're what? So you have got him. <sighs> nice try. But you don't know anything, and you can't prove anything. So just get lost. A 
But Diablo's smart and strong. Neville couldn't just drag him off. No, not against his will. But Neville's cunning. Maybe he used Lady Louise as a lure. Yeah, I'd believe that. <laughs> How come you're only smart sometimes? Hey. So Neville's hidden Diablo somewhere? At their place. It makes sense. I'm going looking for him. Not by yourself, you're not. I can't ask. You're not asking. We're volunteering. Well, I am. And me. Try and stop me. But we've got to be careful. This could be dangerous. If things get scary, head straight back here and take off back to Pine Hollow. The farmhouse is just over the hill, so be careful. Let's creep down and see if we can spot Diablo. My sister came here to pick apples once. Callum set the dogs on her. <sighs> Thanks, Phil. Just what we all needed to make us feel better. Let's go. on the set of club. I'm going to make trouble for this horse thief and his little helpers. Where's Diablo? Nice try. But you don't know anything and you can't prove anything. It's just get lost. So Neville's hidden Diablo somewhere. At their place. It makes sense. I'm going looking for him. Not by yourself, you're not. I can't ask. You're not asking. We're volunteering. But we've got to be careful. This could be dangerous. you see what's happening? You're allowing this vagrant to turn your pupils into criminals. Let's start from the beginning. Someone stole Diablo and locked him up in your garage. Neville found that nag sniffing around my prize mare again. I don't want a roughie like Diablo nipping and pawing at her. All Raphael had to do was ask and he would have got his horse back. There was no need to wreck my barn door or try to ride us down. Okay, okay. It sounds as though there have been mistakes made on both sides. 
Okay, but it's over now, so let's all just... It's not over while you allow vagrants to camp on your land. I wonder what the parents of the pupils think of Raphael leading them astray. That's crazy talk, and you know it. Oh, so they don't. Well, maybe I should tell them exactly what's going on. That was good, Lisa, but try to have softer hands. See, even now your hands do tense. Tense hands hold the horse up. That's much better. Feel the difference? Have you had your private lesson yet, Christy? No, not yet. You may not be able to fit you in by the look of it. Watch and learn, everybody. That's the way it's done. Was that too fast for you, Raphael? Do you want me to do it again for you? It wasn't too fast for me, but it was too fast for your poor horse. <laughs> Says who? It's a simple law of physics. The faster you go, the less able you are to convert speed to height. Looks like you're pretty hot on the theory, but I haven't seen you do any actual jumping. Maybe that's because you're too busy taking things that aren't yours. Like I said, you're all talk. He can jump as high as you, Neville, any day of the week. OK, then. Put your name down for tomorrow's jump off. Then everybody will see you're all show and no go. I thought so. Wimping out, huh? Oh, give it a rest. I'll jump against you tomorrow if that'll shut you up. Lisa, are you doing anything later on? Later on? Yeah, uh, I've still got a few things to finish off for Drew. Then I thought we could uh, maybe get a milkshake at JB's. Yeah, sure. Great. Yeah, there's something I want to talk to you about. See you at JB's. So, is it a date? No, we're just grabbing a shake. He asked you. That qualifies as a date. We're not really going out. He just wants to talk to me about something. About what? Are you asking as Lisa's sister or Ashley's scout? I'm just doing my job. I better get going. Good luck, Lisa. We want to be the first to know what happened. Yeah. Not you. Hey, hey. You look good. Have you done something to your hair? No. Oh, you look older somehow. Ashley, I'm meeting Raphael. Oh. There's no oh about it. Hi. Hi, Raphael. Two milkshakes. Thanks, Scooter. Uh, you got it. I wanted to talk to you away from Pine Hollow. Christy and Veronica always seem to be on my case, and if it's not them, Ashley and Melanie are hanging around listening They're in. They're trying to get together a little news sheet about the stables, and they're after stuff to write about. I wanted to talk to you uh, where we wouldn't be overheard because sometimes I say things and people laugh. I would never do that. When people laugh at us, we're not the joke. They are. I knew I could talk to you. I knew you were special. And Jablon, you're too. What? When he heard you cry out, the first time we met, he stopped and turned. It was like you had called straight into his ear. Why? A horse will listen to some people. And they listen to you, don't they? Because I listen to them. And that's why Diablo loves you so much. He loves me because he knows that I will let him run free when he asks. And would you? Lisa, when we ride a horse, we're just borrowing it. Just tell me what you talked about. About horses. Horses? That's not very romantic. We get along really, really well. Everything doesn't have to be romantic. You must have talked about other things. <sighs> you wouldn't understand. Well, I read all your magazines. It's not that sort of stuff. 
He talked about a horse's spirit, how it can never be owned. Yeah, moving right along. Did he ask you out? It's past your bedtime, Melanie. Oh. Out ski. It's not fair. Sweet dreams. I bet you Lisa has sweet dreams. You're looking rather pleased with yourself, young lady. Things are happening in my life. I'm glad. Good night. Are those vagrants still at Pine Hollow? They were yesterday. It's not right. I'd love to take the creep down a peg or two. I'm not stopping you, son. and you slept in? I just saw Neville do the weirdest thing. Concentrate, Melanie. We have to get these out. As if. So much of this is wrong. Lisa probably bribed Melanie to make it up. Look, I can accept that it's possible, unlikely, but possible, that Raphael would go for you instead of me. But why would he go for Lisa? It's pure fantasy. Oh, you've got your copy. What do you think? As a work of fiction, it makes interesting reading. It's all true. <laughs> the hot date at JB's yesterday? I don't think so. Confirmed by Scooter. Never. <laughs> Get out of here. Ask him then. Ashley is a total news hound. <laughs> no, she's just nosy. I had no idea so much was going on right in front of me. <laughs> Lisa, <laughs> gotta watch the quiet ones. Have you guys seen my guitar? Your guitar? And its case. No. Did you leave it at the stables? No, it's gone missing from our caravan. You mean stolen? I think so. But who would have stolen it? I've got my suspicions. Well, look. It's not the end of the world. I mean, how much was the guitar worth? It's more serious than that, Drew. Why? <laughs> it's stupid. Um, my mum doesn't trust banks. And she also doesn't like taxes, so we always get paid in cash. And I keep it all in a false bottom in my guitar case. How much? All our savings. <sighs> Well, look, I mean, you know we'll have to call the police. Yeah. And if you don't get it back, what will you do? I'll have to sell the Diablo. Oh, no. Yeah, we're still paying off the truck. Is there anything that we could do no, at all? It's okay. No, just... No, it will move closer to the city where it's easier to get work. Time for a change. I've got an out of spare, honey. I think I'll stay and watch you jump. Do you mind? <laughs> That's fine, Mum. I've got to run. Oh, hello, Mrs. Atwood. Oh, Veronica. I thought you might like to read our news sheet from the horse's mouth. Oh? It's full of news on what's going on here. Hmm. And Lisa gets a big mention in the Colts and Phillies column. Hmm. You should read it. I think you'll agree that uh, there are some relationships which are very unsuitable and should be discouraged. And I speak as a friend.
Okay, now, listen up. So now we've got Lisa, Carol, Raphael and Neville still in contention. If you're unsure of this height, you should drop out. There's no shame in knowing your limitations. I think he's talking to you, Raphael. I know it was you who took my guitar. You didn't know anything. What did you do with it? Okay, Carol, you're up. Let an expert show you how it's done. Too easy. Listen to Prancer. Oh, I wouldn't have made that. Wow. You're out and Lisa's still in. That's a first. Come on, Wonder Boy. What are you waiting for? You're right about me, Neville. I'm not sure if I can win against this competition. Drew! I'm gonna have to drop out. The truth at last. You're a wimp. I want you to be beaten by the best rider here today. Lisa. <laughs> Will she be okay? Lisa, are you sure you want to be doing this? Ooh, scary. Oh, be quiet, Neville. You're riding like a dream today. You and Branson. She listens to you. I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> that was stupid. Oh, boo-hoo. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. It's you and Pranza. Together. <laughs> Do it for yourself, Pranza. <laughs> Well, you're a surprise package, Lisa. What a champ! Haven't you ever heard of the laws of gravity, Lisa? I'm very impressed, Lisa. Raphael showed me the way. Hmm. True. Can I have a word? Eleanor, of course. You must be very proud of Lisa. Well, yes. It was a fine display of jumping. Who's that new boy? That's Raphael. Have you seen this? Both Melanie and Ashley have got very <clears throat> vivid imaginations. Raphael seemed very attentive to my daughter in the jumping ring. He's a very good rider. That's because of him she performed so well out there. It's just to a mother, this makes rather alarming reading. Eleanor, there's nothing to it. It's about riding, nothing else. And anyway, Raphael is moving on. When's he going? Just as soon as he sells his horse. The big black one? Diablo, yes. Hmm. Hi, Lisa. Hey there. Lisa, my mother and I are moving on tomorrow. Oh. It's been really great getting to know you. Likewise. I realised you weren't going to stay forever, but I didn't think it was going to be this soon. It's partly because of you. Me? Yeah, I told Mum I wouldn't mind settling down for a year to finish my studies, and she agreed it was a good idea. I was surprised. Excellent. There's a kind of permanent fair at the new fun park just outside Sweetwater where I'll be able to pick up regular work. That's great news. There's only one drawback, really. What's that? I'll miss you. Same here. Uh, do you ever get up to Sweetwater? Now and then. Oh, I'll send you my address. Be sure to look me up when you do. I really learned a lot from you, Raphael.
did you know? Raphael's leaving. And I didn't even get my lesson. Typical, really. People like that are always going to let you down. I suppose you're right. You've had a lucky escape, haven't you? What's that supposed to mean? Well, you sort of fell for him, didn't you? No, I didn't. Well, maybe a bit, but so did you. I admired his skills as a rider. And the rest? Anyway, he didn't fit in here. Yeah, he's basically just a drifter. Imagine if our parents had met him. They would have kicked up such a stink if we brought him home. It doesn't matter so much for somebody like Lisa. Exactly. But we've got our standards to keep up. It's just so hard sometimes. It's a great idea. And I know how much hard work has gone into it, but I'm not going to allow I'm glad you like it. You started working at the next edition already. Well, we just think that you need to make one small change. Really? Well, Colts and Phillies is just a little bit too fly on the wall. People do have a right to their privacy. Not all the time. Why do you say that? Well, Melanie was heading across the field early this morning and she saw someone throw a guitar case into the river. Who was it? If I tell you, can I put it in the next edition? Oh, are you OK, Lisa? Yeah, fine, Mum. You don't look as bright as you did yesterday. Yesterday seems a long time ago. Well, I've got some news that should make you happy. We've bought you a horse. You bought me a horse? Gee, thanks, Mum. Where'd you get it? Pine Hollow. We got it for a song. Pine Hollow? Which one? Diablo. Diablo? But that's Raphael's horse. Not anymore. It's your horse now. You're not part of Pine Hollow anymore. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? I'm getting to you. I want you off our land now. People like you don't belong around here. Hey, you better get going anyway. The police would like to interview Neville. You own the most spectacular horse at Pine Hollow. You lucky duck. Lisa, are you okay? Will you come to the spur with us? Of course. Sure. doing? He's saying thank you.
into the spot from where we begin. Our ride is a circle, or maybe a... This is difficult, Prancer. Wait. Where we started rhymes with begin. We started riding in the riding ring. Let's go, Prancer. Hey. Where we begin? Where to go, Lisa? Riding ring. Nice son, Drew. Drew, those clues were too hard. Veronica, Lisa managed to figure them out, so don't gripe. to everyone, but Lisa was the first one home, so she'll be captain and lead rider of our navigation riding team that takes on Cross County this Saturday. Way to go. You're champion, Lisa. So cool. Uh, Drew, I think I've beaten Lisa in every point-to-point -point cross country we've ever had. Look, the purpose of navigation riding is to test more than riding ability. It's direction finding and the comprehension of clues yes. that gets you to the finish line, yeah? But I've always done Veronica, that better. I've made my decision, huh? Sore loser. So, how did the navigation triad go? Lisa made us all look like dumbos. Speak for yourself, Carol. And as you can see, Veronica's finding it hard to take. Lisa won? Well, that's good news for Cross County. I'll beat her holo. Exactly! Give it a rest, Veronica. Hi, guys. How'd the test go, Stevie? Ah, oh, some of the questions were so hard. <laughs> the sea level equestrian certificate is a cinch. Didn't you go for it twice, Christy? <laughs> so, do you think you'll pass? <laughs> Miracles can happen, I suppose. Veronica, stop being such a pain. Come on, Christy. Let's leave kindergarten to the crybabies. <laughs> Whatever the Saddle Club say about Veronica, you've got to admit, she's a hot dresser. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she wouldn't mind if I tried it on. She doesn't like people touching her stuff. Oh, I'd love to have one like this. Oh, ah. Ashley, look oh. what you've done. Oh, no. Yeah. We'll have to wash it. Without Veronica finding out? But how? Debra, could we use your washing machine? Sure, you're in luck. I was just about to put a load on. I can throw your stuff in with mine. Uh, no thanks. No, it's no trouble. No, we should do our own dirty work. Dirty work? Clothes? Dirty clothes? Uh, okay then. You go right ahead. I'll put my stuff in after you've finished. Thanks. Bye. Carol? Don't you think it's a bit weird that Phil is allowed to wander around Pine Hollow? He's Stevie's boyfriend. What's the problem? He's riding for the opposition next week. It's Phil we're talking about. He'd never do anything sneaky. Oh, wouldn't he? He's been slinking around the stables like he's up to no good. Really? Yeah, really. Just minding my own business. You better level with me, Phil, because Veronica's out to make trouble. She's saying that you're up to no good to make sure your club wins the navigation race. Me? That's crazy. I would never do anything like that. 
So what are you doing? Look, I'd like to tell you, but I can't. Why not? Because it'd be all over the stables in no time. How do you figure that? Because girls are gossips. Where do you get your prejudice about girls from? I've got sisters, remember? Okay, but just tell me what you're up to. What? No wonder Kara defended Phil. What? They're on together. Carol and Phil, they're sneaking off behind Stevie's back. I saw them together looking very guilty. Oh, how terrible. Not. <laughs> Lisa, I'd like to talk something over with you. I'm not trying to cause trouble or anything. Veronica, I think it would be best if you got straight to the point. I just think it's so disloyal for one member of the Saddle Club to betray another member. Phil is two-timing Stevie. With Carol. You're dreaming! Afraid not. They snuck off and spent the whole afternoon together. Are you sure? That's boys for you. I don't believe it. Nor do I. So let's just forget about it. Although Phil was doing something that he was very cagey about. But not with Carol. Of course not. Still, I reckon we should tell Carol what's being said about her behind her back. OK. Carol, Veronica's out to make trouble. She says you're two-timing Stevie with Phil. Wouldn't life be dull without Veronica? I'd never do a thing like that. That's what we both think. Do you know what Phil was up to? He was very mysterious when I asked him to come to JB's. Ah, uh, just mucking about, I suppose. So you weren't with him? Um, for a bit. So what were you doing? <laughs> just stuff. Stuff? What sort of stuff? Uh, you know, stuff. The stain's gone, but so was most of the colour. We must have put too much detergent in. It looks like it's seen a ghost. Veronica's going to kill us. Wait, I've got an idea. My aunt does a lot of tie-dyeing and stuff. I'll take it to her tonight. Good thinking, Melody. with guys. They just do whatever they want. <laughs> just ignore us, Stevie. <laughs> Part. Except Teddy. Teddy seems to be perfectly okay. What could it be, Red? Is it something they've eaten? Could it be something yeah, they've what? Starlet needs a vet straight away. And so does Comanche. Okay, okay, I can't hear myself think. Quiet down. Don't worry. It's not life threatening. Please go to the lounge. Whilst Red and I have a talk. But Drew. What do you think it is? We need a vet now. Go to the lounge. Go on, Vamoose. Of course. It all adds up. What does? His odd behaviour. Whose odd behaviour? And his horse is the only one which isn't sick. Are we talking about Phil here? Don't you see? It's the only explanation which fits the facts. Phil has poisoned the other horses, so his club will win the race. 
What? Phil, that's motive and opportunity. He was back here while we were out riding yesterday. Remember he's been sneaking off? But isn't that to two times Stevie? You can't have it both ways. <laughs> you can be a two-timing poisoner. In fact, they probably go together. This is Phil we're talking about. <laughs> you finally flipped her lid, Veronica. Okay, okay. Then tell me why Phil's horse, which will be riding against us on Saturday, is the only one fit and healthy. She's got a point. You actually think I would poison your horses? We don't, Phil. But Veronica does. I do too. How else could it have happened? And I'm so sure that you did it, that I'm taking Garnet home for the night. I'll see you later. <sighs> What's happened to my coat? I don't know. Why ask us? I wore it a couple of days ago and it was fine. Maybe you've put on weight. Jump two sizes <laughs> since Tuesday? It's a difficult age you're at. What's that mean? Well, at your age, it's hard to keep slim because... Because you have more money to spend on ice cream and chocolate. <sighs> Nonsense. I'm just building muscle from all the riding I'm doing. <sighs> Trim, taut and terrific. You can have the coat, Ashley. I don't want it anymore. All's well that ends well. Deborah and Drew. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Why didn't you tell us you were coming? I don't want anything to interfere with my first 24 hours with you. <laughs> <laughs> the test results show that my diagnosis was correct. The horses have a low concentration of some chemical in their systems. What is it? Like you don't know, Phil. Oh, be quiet, Christy. Oh, the lab isn't sure, but they think it's a, it's a heavy metal like lead or chromium. But where would you find such stuff? It's an industrial byproduct. There aren't any factories around here, are there? No. <laughs> the mystery deepens. So are the horses fit enough to ride? Oh, yes, I've just checked them over. So can we take them for a hack? Hmm. I think a gentle hack would probably help them eliminate the toxins. Excellent. What, uh, what did that strange remark of Christie's mean? Oh, from what I can gather, some of the girls think that Phil is trying to sabotage the Pine Hollow horses so the Cross County will win. <laughs> I didn't know the stakes of the pony clubs were so high. Every man for himself. Or every boy and girl. <laughs> Drew? Hmm? I think Phil is two-timing Stevie with Carol. Uh... Well, you know, they're still young. Exactly. They don't know any better, so you can overlook it, can't you? Um... I don't think I should really get involved in this one, Veronica. <laughs> but if Phil and Stevie were married, it would be different, wouldn't it? That's... That's not likely to happen, though, is it? Well, they're far too young. No, not Phil and Stevie. Deborah and Max. What? What about Deborah and Max? They're happily married, Drew. So? Drew, I know Max asked you to stand in for him whilst he was away, but come on. There are limits. He trusted you, Drew. Strange girl. You're looking a bit fierce there, Veronica. <laughs> Guys! <laughs> yeah? Well, men, you know. What about them? Exactly. Well, how are you supposed to know what they get up to when you're not there? Well, isn't it the same with girls? You've got to trust them. Well, you can trust girls. Wait, 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 wait. I thought you meant you can't trust guys with the girls. I do. Then haven't the girls got something to do with not being able to trust the guys? 
No, it's the guys that do it. And not by themselves, they don't. Oh, you're a guy. You're just trying to cover up. I'm on the level. Trust me. No, oh, trust you. <laughs> I don't think so. It's worth a try. <laughs> You're not covering up for Phil, are you? Come on, Stevie, listen to what you're saying. Are you falling for Veronica's tricks? Phil would never poison our horses, and I would never betray a fellow saddle clubber. I'm not doing the poisoning. Veronica's poisoning people's minds. You've got to believe me. I believe you, Phil. You're not feeling well, are you, boy? What's wrong? What's going on? Prancer and Garnet are fighting fit, but all the others, including Teddy, are sick. In fact, they were sicker than yesterday. We better get Dr. Judy in again. What do you reckon it is, Red? I've never seen something so off again, on again. Got me tossed. So, help me here, Veronica. Phil's horse is really sick. But yours isn't. Does that make you the poisoner now? Don't be idiotic. I would never do something like that. And neither would I. So how's it happening? Prancer didn't go on the hack yesterday because I was at a music lesson. Veronica took Garnet at home. It must be something you guys did on the trail. Well, I didn't do anything. <sighs> no, Lisa's right. It was something the horses did. Drink from the creek. That must be it. Hi, guys. What do you think of my coat? Can we borrow your ponies? Thanks, guys. What about my coat? No, we just want your ponies. We have to search along the banks. Christy, what do you think of my coat? A bit small. It'd look better on Melanie, I think. That's what I think, too. You're not getting it, Melanie. OK, no need to snap. Okay. They can't drink the water from there. It's got to be upstream of where they drank. But how far? Just keep going. Look! Danger. Industrial waste. Phew! It stinks. Look at all the goo coming out. It's coming from over there. Maybe they're dumping more stuff. Let's go. On them. Poison. Isn't isn't this a clear water stream? Yeah, I think you're right. Doesn't this run into the Willow Creek Reservoir? That's where the town's drinking water comes from. We've got to ride down and make them shut off the sluice gate. Well, what are we waiting for?
Lisa. Nice writing. Nice writing yourself, Veronica. It's Max! What? Good to see you! Oh, where did you spring from? Max is hey, here! Hey, guys! Why are you back here? Oh, it's my birthday. So I've flown in for a lightning visit. Oh, how romantic. Mm. Oh, no. What's wrong? It must have been my Max hey, kissing ben. Deborah. Everybody! First of all, welcome back, Max. Even if it is only for one week. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Thanks, hey, darling. <laughs> Second, I have just received a cheque from the mayor of Willow Creek as a token of his gratitude for saving the town's water supply. Veronica was able to identify the truck and the culprits will be brought to justice. Good job, Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Third, Lisa and Veronica cooperated so closely in their life-saving ride that I'm making Veronica co-captain of the navigation team. <gasps> this has come at the right time. And so I'm gonna put it towards fixing the fence in the yard, yeah? Oh, uh, Ron. Uh, uh, Drew, if I could just pull rank here, I uh, I think we should all head down to JB's and blow the money on a slap up meal with all the trimming. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. Sorry. And I have an announcement to make. I have the results of Stevie's sea level <gasps> equestrian <gasps> certificate. Drum roll, please, Maestro. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie Lake. A plus pass mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Wow. That's wonderful, Phil. I helped. That's what Phil and I were doing when we couldn't tell you. Thanks, Carol. Oh. Hey, what about me? <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.